And now, a look at Season 1, Episode 1 of Escape Mail, an escape room game delivered to your home. We received a review copy of this episode of Escape Mail from Mobile Escape, and no other compensation was provided. All right, so Escape Mail is probably not one people have heard of before. This is this is uh, something different. I don't even, I, I, to me, it's still a tabletop game, but it's not your standard board game. This is a new escape room experience delivered by mail from a company called Mobile Escape. Uh, they are Canadian, located in Alberta, Canada, so thumbs up Canadians. Uh, you can get a season one episode at a time, so you can just buy season one, episode one, or you can buy a bundle of all of them together, or you can actually get it as like one of those monthly boxes where they'll send you a new episode each month. Now, the cost of an individual episode is $14.99 Canadian, whereas the bundles cost $132 Canadian, which is a heck of a lot better than $180 if you bought them all separately. Now, Sean and I actually did some comparison shopping on this after checking it out, and this seems pretty much on par with similar mail-order puzzle experiences. Yeah. Now, if you want to take a look at what you get in this first episode of Escape Mail, I do encourage you to check out our Escape Mail unboxing video on YouTube now, in this video, I try to be really careful not to spoil anything. Uh, people have a various different levels of uh, acceptability for what they consider spoilers. So what I do is I open up the envelope. Everyone's going to see that. And then I get to a seal. And I don't break that seal. And then I give everyone notice that I'm about to break that seal. So if you want, you can see that far and then turn the video off. But to be honest, I don't think seeing what's in this envelope is going to spoil anything. Like, you're not going to see any of the puzzles. You're not going to see any clues. You're just going to see the bits that come in it. Yeah, I mean, short of literally pausing and staring and working out, figuring out things and, and you know, ch trying to catch things when he holds it up to the camera. But it's yeah. only recorded at 720p anyway. So <laughs> the, the chances are you're not going to be able to spoil anything. And... Even if we were to have mildly spoiled it, it's only episode one of 12 True. and they offer bundles that don't even include episode one. So if you would had felt it was spoiled, <laughs> you can just go ahead and get the bundles episode two through 12 instead of episode one through yep. 12. Yeah, I thought that was actually pretty brilliant. So what I'll say here is, first off, I was surprised how much they shoved in one envelope. Like the envelope didn't look that thick, but I felt like I just kept pulling stuff out of it. It felt like a clown car. Like there's parts of a map, some twine, there's a shipping manifest, a scrap of parchment with marks on it that was like threadbare and falling apart and a bunch more. Again, I'm not going to go into all the details. Now, what I will say is the quality was a mixed bag. Like all of it was pretty obviously like, like someone threw this in their inkjet printer, right? Some of it was literally on paper. Some was on cardstock. There's no cardboard here. Like you're, we're not talking about punch outs or anything like that. Um, some of the bits were weathered and folded and they look kind of aged, right? Like they did the, the, the tricks. I don't think anything was soaked in tea, but it kind of had that look. But then others were not. Where like, like this literally like just looked like it was printed on inkjet paper. Um, I can't say I was overly impressed, but you know what? I wasn't disappointed either. It was kind of what I expected from something someone sent in the mail. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's sometimes an authentic clue in a modern puzzle really could just be something someone zipped off on an inkjet these days. True. Uh, though I guess I would hope that as you get deeper into the seasons, things got a little bit more interesting for materials. And I got to say, looking ahead, it did look like it. I saw some much more 3D looking components looking on their website. Uh, the other thing that's worth noting is that you will need tape. You will need scissors. Uh, you will need to destroy components in order to solve the puzzle, which means that each episode is a one and done. It's disposable. You're not going to be able to pass it on to your friend. Now, the other thing you require, which I thought was pretty interesting, is you need to have an email account and access to a web browser. Well, luckily, nothing that most people don't have regularly accessible. We should note that Escape Mail does market strongly to schools. So they do keep something in mind uh, that necessary. So, you know, it's going to be something that a student has accessible to them in most cases. So for the actual sitting down and playing the game, uh, we decided to invite Brenda, that's Deanna's mom, over to try it. Uh, she is a huge puzzle fan. Like out of our whole family, she's the one that, you know, goes to shoppers and picks up the Sudoku books and the logic puzzle books and that. And I thought she'd really enjoy the experience and also, well, be an asset if we got stuck because she's probably way better at puzzles than we are. One thing I found very interesting about this when I compare it to other escape room style games I've played 
is that there were no instructions. Like it literally just started immersed in the experience uh, with a note. This is something you're going to see as soon as you open the envelope. So I'm not spoiling it here. Uh, it was obvious. You're going to read this note from a family member and that's it. Like after that, I, it was not immediately obvious where to go. So at first, like the three of us were literally just like, here, let me see that. Let me see that. Hold this. Oh, look, this is underlined. Oh, what the heck does this mean? Like fumbling around trying to figure out how everything interconnected. Now, eventually I figured out the one trick, right? That kind of gave us some direction. And I got to admit, finding that was like the first win of this thing. Like it was like, oh, that felt good. I'm like, oh, that's, that's the thing that tells you what to do. I felt good finding that. And that feels like an authentic escape room experience to me. Uh, you know, if you go into a commercial escape room, you know more or less what your end goal is. You need to escape or, you know, fire a gun, fire off the cannon or, you know, find the spy. But you have no idea what form it's going to take between okay. here and there or what you might experience on the path to get there. And finding that starting point is often part of the uh, game. See, that's cool to hear. See, my, my experience has been with the Exit series, and I've seen the Unlock series. I haven't done one myself, and they are very clear about what you're looking for and what to do. Like, they're, here are your cards, and here's what you're looking for on the cards, and here you're going to do this, and here's the code wheel, and a very clear direction. Like, it has a rule book, for, uh, like a board game, where this did not. So that, it's interesting to know that this is actually closer to a real escape room experience. Now, interestingly, at least I thought it was, uh, during that initial confusion, there was a particular uh, project that Brenda started working on that was a step above what was actually required. So this was a word-based puzzle, and she had gotten it about 75%, maybe an 80% solved. Then we found another clue that gave us a cipher that would have made solving that entire thing very easy from the start. So I thought it was amusing that we had almost solved like the hard, we almost did it on hard, like we almost skipped a step. Yeah, and some people are just dedicated puzzle solvers. And just because a cipher helps doesn't mean there may not be another mm. path to get to that same solution. Now, I guess I, looking at the, the experience as a whole, I think I found the difficulty to be just about right. Uh, this said difficulty regular, whatever that means. Uh, we did get stumped a few times, but never long enough that it got frustrating. Uh, we definitely didn't give up on anything. There also weren't any puzzles that were just glaringly obvious. There was never the, oh, obviously this goes here. Everything took at least a bit of thought. Uh, I figure our total time to solve everything was probably just under an hour, which I think sounds about right for this style of game. Yeah, and that sounds like a pretty fulfilling escape room experience without the concern for pandemics and cleanliness. <laughs> that too. Now, one aspect I didn't like was the technological aspect. The fact that, like, yes, we knew you need an email address and a web browser. Well, obviously, you're going to email someone, right? Like, that's just obvious. Why would I need an email address? I'm not going to email anyone. And it just, having to do that, like, it was done well enough, but it felt like it took us out of the game. Like, uh, just to fight the fact that, that we knew this and, and the letter, something the letter, the language used, the, the, the names used just made me feel like we were like in an Indiana Jones. Like this was back in the past. It was like the 1940s. We were on some kind of like treasure hunt. Right. And I just pictured like the family member that wrote us to be like Indiana or like a professor Jones or something like, I don't know. I just pictured something totally different. And I can say that this is definitely modern. And uh, seeing that end, I just for some reason had a craving for craft beer. It, it took some twists that I think I, I feel safe in saying were budget related. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, which does lead me to the most disappointing part of this entire endeavor, which was the reward at the end, the payoff. While all of us had fun puzzling things out and getting to the final answer, that payoff, I will say, is lame. Like, like I, I'm tempted to just like drop a link in chat and spoil it here so other people know what to expect here, but I won't. I'll be good. I will just say that it wasn't what I was expecting. Uh, it was very poorly produced uh, and rather corny. Uh, and, and I got to say, did not make me want to order episode two. Now, I've seen what we've discussed in here. I didn't take part in the escape room, but I have seen the link. Uh, yeah. And if it were to represent the entirety of the season... I might start to question the value. Though, as we've pointed out, the activities and puzzles were yeah. certainly well-formed. Uh, and it's one of those things where you almost, they almost might have been better off without including that last portion. If, if that yeah. payoff hadn't been there at all, 
Oh, it I would might have been a better experience yep. because you wouldn't have had the letdown. And that's one of those things where at a real escape room, the fact that you finish and the door opens is is the great part. Yeah. You don't need the story to be completed anymore. You have escaped. That's the win. Uh, and they've they've gone to that next step as a as a you know continuity thing, I think. Uh, and it it hurt. Now, Deanna is also pointing out that it also broke the story in a way. I don't know if I want to read off what she's saying because it's getting a little spoilier. Uh, basically, you were trying to work with a family member to do something and they were looking for help. But the end was them going, yeah, yeah, you figured it out too, which is kind of weird because I thought they were looking for help. So there was a story disconnect there as well. Right. But like to be honest, I think Sean's right. I think if the end result was that it just led to buy the next season, might have actually felt better than what we did get. Right. Now, overall, I don't, I don't know. I have mixed feelings. I'd say all three of us enjoyed the experience. Um, the most fun actually was that initial confusion when you just have all this stuff in front of you and you're like, I don't even know. And like there were some things we picked up and managed to get something out of and we're like, oh, but what the heck does that mean? And like noticing some of the, the bits of clues that you put together later. Like, remember, we noticed this. Uh, there was the puzzles were difficult enough that you felt solving them, right? That's part of the reward of puzzles, right? Is you get that, yeah, I'm a smart, I got it. Uh, the solving the puzzles was fun. I just ah, that reward, like I, I don't know. Um, I didn't pay for this, so I, I maybe I'd feel different if I put out hard earned cash for this too, and then saw that end because that end game here was lacking. Like it, again, it didn't make me want to try the next episode. So looking at the value, right? So for twenty two dollars Canadian or less, if there's a sale, I can get a complete story and a complete experience from one of the exit games from Cosmos. I've reviewed those on the blog. If you want to see about them, there's two of them we've reviewed there. Whereas for Escape Mail, if I want to get the full story, if I want to see all of season one, I got to spend over $130. And that's only if I buy the one time. If I start buying them separate, I can spend $180. I got to say $180 buys an awful lot of exit games. But now at the same point, uh, you're getting... Uh, what I, I'm trying to compare here, when you look at the, the, the number of puzzles, um, is it an exit game versus one of these one of these episodes? Is it about two episodes for an exit game sort of comparison? Ooh. Exit games have a lot of puzzles. Like. Uh, you're looking at 13 puzzles. On OK, so you're looking so you're looking almost three episodes for an exit game. OK, yeah. That, that's a I'm, I'm trying to remember. I think the last one we played went up to an end deck. That's, right. a, that's a, an estimate. I'd have to check our reviews. So, yeah, you're looking at about 13 puzzles. I, to me, it's it's that full story. It's that full reward. It's that I get a full experience as opposed to a cliffhanger that makes me wanting more. Right. I can definitely see people would like this. Like, like, to be honest, this is something I'm like, that might be a good gift for Brenda because she really enjoyed the puzzle aspects. Right. So that's something to consider, but I'll admit I'm not going to be picking up the next episode. Now they, what they do do, which is kind of cool is as Sean mentioned, now that I've tried episode one, I could buy a bundle with two and on, which means you can easily without much investment, just buy episode one without having to worry. Now you got to buy the full bundle. They have priced it that way, which I think is cool. Yeah. All right, well, for a more in-depth look at this first episode of Escape Mail, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.